Um, so I'll just kick us off. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the May 29th instance of the CNCF IoT Edge Working Group meeting. Um, we don't have any items on our agenda for the day, and we um, don't have many participants today. It may also be in part because this is our first time switching to the CNCF Zoom instead of the Kubernetes Zoom. Um, and so this is like a year later into our transition to the CNCF. Um, that being said, uh, we do abide by the CNCF code of conduct. Um, so if you don't want to be recorded, feel free to um, leave or turn your camera off. And um, we can go ahead and proceed with just a birds of a feather discussion. So um, I don't know if people have any updates they want to share. Um, Joel, if you've been working on anything you want to share, I can share some updates and kind of chat. Yeah, I don't have any updates. Um, I don't have any open source updates, I should say. Um, um, I have the day job updates, um, but that's not applicable here. I think one thing looking forward to um, um, just open-ended discussion is uh, KubeCon North America, the call for papers, is I think in two weeks or a week. It's June 9th. I don't know if we want to talk about that or all, at all or or even begin at least the awareness for maybe if it's not a session, is there something you want the working group to do with like the main trainer track, maintainer track on that Monday or, or whatever the working group wants to do within that. Yeah, that's a great point. Um... Yeah, the question of how do we want to use the maintainer track or how can we facilitate main session submissions among group members would be interesting. And I didn't have any ideas at this point in time, um, but I wanted to mention it. So is that's coming up June 9th is a week from Sunday, actually. In the past, we've talked about collaborating with the WASM working group on a session. So um, I can reach out to them again and see if there's space for that. Uh, one thing that we could do is, um, well, I was gonna say, um, Cube was um, submitted to the CNCF as a sandbox project at KubeCon um, Europe. And there were so many submissions that like the pipeline to get reviewed is quite a long time right now. Um, but say that were to be accepted before KubeCon North America, we could do a talk about Spin Cube, So Kubernetes on the edge um, with WebAssembly um, and SpinCube supports an MQTT trigger. So you can like have serverless WebAssembly um, triggered by MQTT. So we could do a really cool demo there. Um, that would be kind of fun. And we could do that joint with the WebAssembly working group. I think um, my question would be, is that something we want to do as like a working group? Because to me, that kind of maintainer track presentation would be about showcasing interesting technology and would maybe attract members from the, the standpoint of, wow, there's like really cool stuff going on. I want to join this group to like hear about it, but I don't think it really speaks to maybe what we're doing as a working group. I don't think that it's we're an back. issue because you can always dedicate a couple of minutes to, to introduce the group. And, but, you know, to me, this kind of, Sessions are even more interesting than than the general working. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not even sure what the status is of this spin cube. Is that already like a CNCF project, or is it like pre sandbox or something? Yeah, sorry, we submitted it as a CNCF sandbox project in Paris, and um, I, the queue to be reviewed is very long. Was what I was trying okay. to get at. So it's taking a while to get in front of the TOC. Um, so, so yeah, it I wouldn't would like that, qualify currently. Okay. <laughs> I think where I was going with that is that I think that for things that are already sandbox, 
they have their own ability to submit a session. So it's probably not appropriate to put them under the working group. But for pre-sandbox that are open source, um, I think that that might be a good venue to go give them a chance to go get some um, eyeballs and recognition. And maybe if the time slot's big enough, we shouldn't have just one, but just open it up for you know dividing up the maintainer track session just to offer that um, you know pre-sandbox projects that are open source, obviously in the IoT edge category, can go there and sort of do lightning talks and the maintainer track session will just be an intro saying that our group is a forum to go talk about these subjects. And here are some examples, you know, and then just close it for how you join the group meetings. And I think that might make for a, a nice session. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'd be curious what other pre sandbox projects we have in mind, like, um, it's almost like you might have to offer an invite and maybe nobody else would just nobody else would even uh, submit. But we just divide it up so that if if it turns out that it's only spin cube, fine, you get the whole slot. But if we get two, then we divide it up. Once you get to the point where nobody even has five minutes, I think <laughs> you've got to cut it off because, you know, there's no value beyond a certain threshold. There just isn't enough to talk about something. So I think the minimum would be five minutes, but we just um, do an invite on our own saying we're going to host this. For the CNCF CFP submittal, you just say you're going to do it. And we don't necessarily have to have you know, the same deadline for this that the overall track submit has. We'll just say that the the projects we're going to talk about is a TBD at this point. And I don't think we have to have it finalized until that due date where you're supposed to have your PowerPoint submitted and things like that. And, you know, anyway, just throwing that out there as an idea on how to approach it. I know, I have a feeling that the committee if you tried slipping in projects that already are, you know, sandbox or above, that they're going to deem that inappropriate for this working group that they already have their own opportunity to go direct. But anything in the queue for sandbox or maybe projects that aren't even in that queue yet. Anyway, that's that that was my thought. That's an interesting interpretation. Um, I had always assumed that the CNCF prioritizes its own projects mm -hmm. and didn't think about the lens that maintainer tracks are an opportunity to instead prioritize other projects. So um, I think that's an interesting angle. And the only other thing we need to consider is that when you're submitting a CFP, a panel discussion would be what this would be, I would assume, because it's like four or more speakers, but we would want to keep it, cap it probably at like four speakers. So I would assume like a project per speaker. Um, and yeah. then the other thing is, um, I believe now we're sharing a maintainer track with all of the runtime tag, right? Okay. Isn't that how it works? So it's like the runtime tag gets a certain number of submissions. So I think we'd need to talk to Ricardo about, and I can put a message in the runtime working group leads channel about um, what is like, what's runtime thinking about this and maintainer uh, track. So kind of, seeing where everyone's heads are at for that, because I know the um, container- What else is in the right track? Right. WebAssembly's in there, right? And then what, what is- WebAssembly, CDI, Container Device Interface. They okay. are the Intel folks that do a lot of stuff with like a dynamic resource allocation and stuff. Um, they really, they usually talk like at most KubeCons. So um, they probably would want a maintainer track the web It'd be interesting to try to combine all three of those then, assuming there's three and not four or more, and try to align them on some kind of common theme, because the fact is, a lot of those could be aligned with Edge, if not all of them. Yeah, we could probably do a demo with all three, like with SpinCube, for example, because mm -hmm. um, CDI... You could, yeah, you could use CDI in conjunction with Kubernetes. Um, the WebAssembly Working Group has 
been doing interesting stuff defining what an OCI spec looks like for WebAssembly, which would probably be what they would want to talk about. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, it, there definitely could be some alignment there. Yeah, and that's the right link, um, Joel. But I, I think runtime tag still has its own session. So it doesn't need to be a runtime tag session, but it, I do think we might only have a certain number of maintainer track submissions. So the maintainer track, is that during the week? I'm asking because I don't know, Steve, or is that the Monday, like the the last one in Chicago, um, myself and Andy went to the Monday tag runtime, um, like leadership or runtime discussion as part of the maintainer because others were committed to the day zero or the other co-located events. Are those... Steve, are those, are those sessions like maintainer track during the week, like the, uh, or is that on the Monday? Um, historically, in my experience now, I missed the last one in Europe, but I've been to pretty much all of them before that, and they are not on the Monday. They're not considered free events. Okay. Um, cool. They do tend to give them what I'm going to derogatively call crappy slots. You know, because they aren't the uh, highest attendance things. So a disproportionate amount of them have been yeah. last session on the last day where good luck because at least half the attendees have already left town kind of thing. But, hey, yeah. it's better than none. Um, but, no, they're mixed in with the regular session. Um, and it's hard to predict where they're going to lie, but they're never... I have never seen one granted one of the prime slots, you know, like midday. Uh, the, the The highest attendance is the first two days of the conference and at midday. And they're always outside that band. Isn't the call for papers for maintainers tracks different from the main main conference? So... It, it used to be, but I thought in the last one that they said that because they weren't going to earmark them anymore, that you went in there with the main um, group of CFPs. So I don't really know. I don't seem, I didn't get any invite like I traditionally have. Um, so I don't know. I haven't. It could even be that I got an email to my old VMware address and, you know, it goes into the black hole at this point. But I used to get those invites saying submit under maintainer track and I haven't seen one. I can ask the runtime tag leads as well on that one. So about yeah. where we get the submission link if there is a specific one. Yeah. It could even be that it goes up to the tag runtime and doesn't bubble down anymore to this group. Because maybe the reason I was getting it is I was still in the legacy Kubernetes thing. And, you know, as we've noticed with the Zoom link, they're not necessarily, you know, it, it the queue for doing that kind of maintenance work on the project is pretty long and they don't get to things right away. Anyway, if if people do want to do it, I think the safe thing would be to assume that the deadlines, the normal one for the main CFPs, which is I think June something. Um, and let me just look it up. June nine, it says it's the deadline at midnight. Um, because if it turns out that's early, there's no harm done and Historically, there's been a lot of procrastination on that, where it's done a couple hours before midnight when the deadline's midnight. But uh, the the wise thing might be to try to put it together now. Uh, maybe we can even discuss <clears throat> who's likely to be there, if, you know, to conduct this. At this point, since I don't have employer funding for travel, I'm probably not going to be there. I don't know if any of the others on this call would expect to be there. 
I can get funding to go if we get accepted. I don't have any, any plans this, at this moment. And I think it's in Utah if people didn't know. Yeah. yeah. I should be able to, I have it penciled in in my calendar for November. And it's just on the other side of the hills. I'm in Denver. They're mountains, but you know, it's relatively yeah. close. Looks like it's November 12 to the 15th. And on the note of pre-days, um, WASMCon, which used to be a separate conference, is now a pre-event. So there's no more WASM Day, but now the full-on WASMCon um, conference is happening that Monday of KubeCon week. So if you want to get involved with like um, the WebAssembly space more, a lot of the WebAssembly contributors will be there. Um, WASM Day in the past has been more focused on application developers and operators. WasmCon traditionally is focused on more of the lower level engineers who are building out the WebAssembly specifications. And then WasmIO is just kind of, this is what WebAssembly is and very like um, showcasing all that can be done with it. And I don't know, WasmIO is great. I really highly recommend looking at those recordings. Um, but anyways, I bet WasmCon will now be a little higher level, given that it's um, being tagged next to Kubernetes. So I think it'll be a good event. Um, but yeah, would recommend coming to that as well, Joel, if you're going to come in already. If we've killed this, this is just another housekeeping thing that I noticed, but the group has a calendar in the CNCF community calendar. I went there, the only documentation I found on updating it, it because it, the calendar entry now has the stale Zoom link, um, was filling out a form saying, contact us. I don't know if anybody knows of any alternate process. Um, under the old CNCF, if you were an admin, you could go edit those calendar entries directly yourself, but um, we should get that updated. Yeah, there's also two instances on some days, um, but yeah, we should update that. Is Okay, I'll gosh. fill out the form and we'll just see if that works unless somebody knows of a, an alternate uh, recommended technique. So the one, the one other thought in addition to that housekeeping was the Slack channel is still under Kubernetes and we've maintained it there. I don't know if we ever want to look at going to the CNCF Slack well, for the working group. I think that we, we, we entertained a move when we, when we did move to the CNCF and given that we've got hundreds of members on there, we decided to just leave it in place just because, you know, the, on a lot of these groups, like I know on some other ones, I'm pretty casual where I check in on it every six months and we could move, but as long as people seem to be finding us there, I don't know, we thought we'd just leave it there, but we could change that decision. Let's see. I just, I'm just looking now. There's actually 649 members. Sort of the same thing applies to the YouTube channel where technically we could create a new one. And until I try to upload, I don't know that they've pulled my creds on the YouTube channel or not, in which case we'd have to move. But I think there are having it in one place because people can just discover a video that they liked and then the YouTube kind of search engine optimization will recommend others in the same channel. So I think that splitting channels kind of harms your discoverability. Yeah, I, I agree that it might be a dent. I agree the Slack should maybe stay. I do think the CNCF YouTube might be better because we have connections to the admins there. Like mm -hmm. for Kubernetes, you're the only one who has the keys, which makes it um, 
like hard to add other people and right. offload some of the uploading from you while with CMCF Ricardo was able to add us in like an hour um and we could create a new channel there and you know it just seems like we have the point of contacts very clearly I guess there. we might as well create the new channel and then we'll have it if we elect to do the flip because just having it doesn't mean that you I think until you post the first video that's not really there so but I mean, it would be helpful to talk about that because I would love to this meeting's over and immediately post it. Like, you know, yeah. have that be the end of the meeting flow. Um, and but if you want me to hold off on that, I can if we want to talk about it more. Yeah, go ahead and do it if you want. The only reason I didn't immediately post it was typically the account had the auto record which would record all of that pre-meeting stuff before we actually get started. And I always wanted to go edit it and cut that off. And um, the Kubernetes policy management set that to trigger the auto record automatically, which was a pain. And I never could figure out how to turn it off. In YouTube, you can edit it as you publish it. So you can shorten it. Okay. That's what I was going to do. Because I do that for um, uh, the Bytecode Alliance SIG docs. Uh -huh. is I'll just have it record the whole time. But then when we kick off, I can just gooch okay. over the I didn't even video. know that was there. So you're, you're better enough than I am at it. I just got my, like, the keys handed to me in a little demo. So I'm fresh on understanding <laughs> it. That's the only reason. Um, but... It could be I'm such a dinosaur <laughs> that at the time I started doing it, it wasn't there and it's a late ad too or something. Okay, anyway, in terms of birds of a feather, has anybody come across anything interesting lately or things they want to share? Um, I'll just talk a little bit about something that I think is exciting, um, uh, just because we've been talking about it a fair bit um, within our like our work that we do with spin cube but um essentially now with like uh with with um web assembly we're i guess we've been talking a lot about the spin cube side of things and um another part of like what we've done with um spin and fermion is that we've made it so that we have a product where it's a multi-tenant version of spin and so we were just the ms build and we did some really cool demos where we put over 3,000 um, spin applications on a single node. That was like a four, maybe eight, four to eight gigabyte, but no more than four core, maybe two core nodes and having like 3,000 apps. And so I think when we talk about the edge, we also talk about how we're kind of limited about by the number of pods that Kubernetes subscribes to you. Um, so that that was something that was exciting to get to demo um it's just like the 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 massive scale you can get to with WebAssembly. okay i'm gonna ask you a possibly dumb question just because i'm not that familiar with spin cube but when you say multi-tenant so spin cube is this something that you can host yourself on a kubernetes cluster or is it cloud hosted by some third party that kind of owns the hosting yeah, SpinCube's just an operator you can install. So okay. SpinCube's the conglomeration of four projects uh, that were created by Microsoft, Asset Fermion, Liquid Reply, and SUSE. Um, So it has four parts. One is the Containerd shim. So essentially, Containerd is running WebAssembly applications instead of containers. And so you need a shim for that. Then we have a runtime class manager that helps you get that shim on each of your nodes because you don't want to have to manually install the binary on all of your nodes. So it'll install a shim and update your container D config so that it knows what runtime class means to use this shim. And then we have an operator because it's Kubernetes um, that makes it easy to apply these spin applications to your cluster. So essentially um, go from the spin app you're, demo you're using locally and then deploy it to your cluster 
um, and configure all your favorite Kubernetes resources um, and a plugin to be able, uh, like spin plugin to like- Okay, so the pre-WEC is you have to have a Kubernetes cluster, but it could be cloud hosted, public cloud hosted or on-prem your own, maybe even air gapped, assuming you have, you know, an OCI registry or something uh, on your side of the air gap. And mm -hmm. do, does it in fact require Kubernetes or could you do it on something less that's merely containers? I guess if it's an um, operator, it sort of implies you need the Kubernetes API, but um, potentially there's some things like that thing Portainer did that put a Kubernet a partial Kubernetes API on top of Docker Compose nodes. The, the only yeah, reason I ask is for the edge thing where you're really low resource. Yeah. There might be somebody gravitating to something that is you know, sub Kubernetes just to save resource. Yeah, you totally, the main part of all of this is the shim. Like mm -hmm. you really just need the shim. So you can run it just with Docker. Um, uh -huh. You can, um, you could just install the shim and do a series of CTR runs like uh, UCTR. So yeah, you could, if you had some Kubernetes, slim down Kubernetes API, the, all the operator does is um, automates the creation of, deployments essentially uh -huh. um so it's yeah you can you can slim it down the multi-tenant thing i was talking about is not open sourced so that's like if you want even bigger gains that's like the platform that we have that is also installable on a cluster it's not like our hosted cloud that you have to use um it's just a different binary essentially so um, the feature and benefit of the calling it multi-tenant is that you've got either groups within an org or even different companies that don't fully trust one another? Is that what you mean by no, multi-tenant? Sorry. Or? Yeah, multi-tenant is just a term I use for it. Um, essentially, when you uh, use SpinCube, when you deploy a pod to your cluster where the OCI reference is not a container, but it's a spin application, what that is the equivalent of doing is doing a spin up, if you're familiar with the spin CLI, which is basically you have one listener for a bunch of WebAssembly components. So you might have five different event handlers in that spin application and one listener. So one event handler might receive like messages from an SQS like queue. One might receive uh, messages from a Redis queue. One might be receive HTTP requests and all of them are within the same spin application. So you have one listener. But um, ideally, you could have one listener for all of your pods. And so that's what I mean by multi-tenant is just having one HTTP listener or like one trigger listener for every for all of your applications. Um, but basically, you want to reduce the amount of things that are running when you're not receiving a request. So um, like that's the idea of a serverless is that you truly scale to zero. Yeah, and so, so if reducing it's event the driven, you want to scale to zero or one. Yeah, scale you know, to one. Than... Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also because there is a mapping of a single pod to a single spin app, you're limited still by Kubernetes networking limits and like pod limits. But okay. the difference is that even though you're limited by pod limits, most people can't really get over 30 containers on a node. Um, but you can actually hit the like 150 to 250 with spin cube because it's so small. Okay, got it. That sounds interesting. Maybe, maybe write yourself up for a demo of this, this stuff at a future meeting. You know, perhaps you'd feel guilty because, you know, you're an admin of the group, but uh, you've got my backing as a neutral third party saying that that sounds interesting if you want to bring a presentation and demo to a future meeting of the group on that. Sure, and also uh, Dehan brought this up, but this is probably the most recent demo I've given. It was like an interview with the new stack from a few months ago, uh -huh. but that's like only a 10 minute video and it walks through the whole process, so. Um, that's a good watch as well. Okay.
Well, if nobody else has any suggested birds or other comments, I apologize because I've had a lot of stuff going on personally in the past month, so I haven't been paying that much attention to the IoT Edge stuff, but maybe we'll wrap it up early. Uh, just a quick question. Is Edge Day happening at KubeCon? You know, I don't know. I have not got it. I've used to get the invites to that too, and I haven't heard a word out of the CN CF on that. I suppose I could search for it. Actually, let me see. The, I think I have the KubeCon link open and the same location where they put the CFP, they usually list the co-located events. There is a drawdown on that page that has uh, Kubernetes on Edge Day. Okay, so I guess it is. Let me click on the link. Yeah, it definitely says they have it, and the CFPs are open till July 14. They've got one sponsor already. Okay, so the answer is yes, they are having it. Um, well, good to know also the CFPs are so much after the first one, so could double submit as well. Yeah. Well, I think we can end early and I'll try and upload this to the new YouTube and keep people fo um, updated if that happens. And then um, Steve, you said you'd reach out about the calendar. So hopefully we have yeah. a new system rigged soon. Okay. Sounds good. Later, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.